Hi, I'm Jake from Northside Custom Crafts and today we're going to make a simple 3D shape on our CNC machine. Check it out. Today we're going to make a simple 3D object. Now, looking at the software, it can be pretty intimidating. You can go in depth with the 3D stuff, but we're not going to do that. We're going to have fun. We're going to go in there and mess around a little bit. I glued up this wood. It's mahogany, of course. I like mahogany and, and hard maple. And the object I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look like the shape I'm going to make is coming out of this. So we'll see if it works. We're going to have fun. We're going to take the intimidation out of 3D. Uh, we're going to go to the computer. If you don't like that kind of stuff, I'm going to put a timestamp right here. And I'll put one in the description. Just hit it. Go right to the action. Now let's go to the computer. So here we are in the home page of Aspire. We're going to create a new file. These measurements are already in here just to save on time. Eight and three quarters by six and three quarters by an uh, inch and three quarters deep. We're going to go off the machine bed, seeing how after the first cut, we're not going to have a top of our surface. So I'm going to go off the machine bed. Uh, we want to go to X and Y off of the center to start with. And I'm going to hit OK. Now we need a shape on here to do, so I'm going to pick a star. And I'm just going to put a star on here. Close that. Um, double click on that, and I'm going to make the star a lot bigger. A little bit bigger still. Good enough for me. So now when we're doing 3D, we need to come down here to the modeling tab, hit the modeling, come up here and hit the 3D view. And we want to do a 2D view and a 3D view at the same time. So we'll cl click on that right there. That was right here. And then we want to we want to change this into a 3D model. So we'll come up here. This top looking button right here looks like a spin top. I'm going to click that. And we just mess around with that for a second. And now all of a sudden it makes us a, a 3D model. So I'm going to put this like right here. We can mess with that basically the shape profile you can have it as a, a more of a round shape like that which is kind of funny looking we can have a pointy shape like that we're gonna have a flat shape it goes straight to flat we want the pointy one just for fun and you can change the angle of this minus or net or positive so I think we're gonna go about right there is about as much as we can do this base height right here is basically splitting this material in half well these two pieces of material aren't exactly the same thickness so I offset it a little bit trying to make it to where we're gonna see the bottom material and the the top material is gonna look like it's coming out of it that's my idea anyway so now we're gonna scale this to exact height we can change it to no limit and it'll change or to the exact and that'll change but I want it to this exact height right here that's just a little bit taller than what the material thickness is for the top of it and so I'm gonna hit apply and we're gonna come over here to tool pass I'm gonna pin it we're gonna go to a roughing tool pass and this right here, the model position in the material. We want to put this. See how this is moving right here? I want to put that to where it's right at the top. And then it'll end up having some the the bottom material being pretty thick still. So 1.75 all this other stuff looks pretty good we're gonna hit OK and then we're gonna come over here it's a quarter inch end mill and you can change whether the material boundary the model boundary so it changes just around the 
the thing you want to do 3D but we want to do the whole material so I'm going to change it to that and we're going to hit calculate so just for fun we'll preview the visible path I think we could probably get rid of this one so we'll maximize that one we'll go back to tool pass and pin it and that looks pretty cool so we're gonna go to 3d finishing tool path and that has a quarter inch ball nose already on it so we don't have to mess with that we still want to go to the material boundary and I'm gonna hit calculate preview visible tool pass we'll do that again we'll reset the preview I'll set it like this. We'll preview all tool paths. So that's pretty cool. The more detailed you want this, you'll keep going over to here and go to the 3D finishing tool bath and you'll select a smaller one every time. So that's a quarter inch. We'll go to eighth inch. We'll hit OK. And we'll hit calculate. Of course, the smaller the tool is, the longer it's going to take. So we'll re preview the tool path again. I got a little better detail. But if you look down here, it's going to say that's three hours. So we probably won't do that for this demonstration. I'll do this one, and that's a, that's a be about an hour, and the roughing would be about an hour also. But these times aren't exact; it's an estimate. Now, we we'll take that for what it's worth. But when I get out there, I'll tell you how long it really is. Now I went out and I made the project, and I came back in just to clarify a few things. This roughing pass here that says it's one hour and eleven minutes. It ended up being forty minutes. And the 3D finish pass says 48 minutes and it ended up being 30 minutes. So if anybody knows why that is, go ahead and leave a, com a comment in the comment section below and we'll have a discussion about it. The other thing is when I did the tool path thing here, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to tilt it a little bit. We're going to do like that. I'm going to show you what I didn't notice. So I'm going to reset this preview. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can see it easier. Uh, I'll reset this preview. I'm going to pick these two tool paths. Now I'm going to run them real quick, and I'm going to show you what I didn't notice when I did this the first time. Okay, it's about to come over here and it's gonna dig down right here. Maybe the next time around, it's gonna go all the way down to the, to the surface. I didn't notice that when I ran this model the first time and it ended up kicking my wedges out and uh, trying to throw stuff around the shop. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like right after we see it right here. See this, boom. See that knocks this whole side out? That's exactly where I had my wedges at and it knocked them out and here's what it looks like. I show you this stuff because if I'm making mistakes like this, you can too. Um, at the end of the day, this is a router spinning at thousands of RPMs, and uh, we do need to be careful. And something simple like this, I need to find out why it did that. But if I would have just looked at this before I started, I was in too big of a hurry, and I found out the hard way. So now you don't have to. Now we're going to get these tool paths right here. We're going to save them. We do it with this button right here. 
we're going to put them on a jump drive and then we're going to see you back out in the shop now that wasn't so bad now you can go into a lot of depth on the 3d stuff but this is for beginners and myself so i have the cut list on here i'm gonna go to the machine if you need a tutorial on how to use this machine then i'll put a video up there check it out get familiar with the handheld controller it's, it's real simple we're gonna put on some music and we're gonna make this thing let's go Thunder, I hear lightning, I hear wonders, and everybody wanna go, but no one really cares to know. I see marvels, I see titans, and some troubles that everybody has to face, that no one really can erase, and they hide away. Turned out pretty cool. This video, the purpose of this video was to get over the intimidation of 3D modeling. I think we've done that. If you watch the software part, I showed you one of the mistakes I made. If I could show you the good stuff, I could show you the bad stuff, right? And another thing I did was these two pieces of wood were scrap and the back of this one has some snipe on it. Therefore, this was a little bit lower than the rest of it. so we didn't get the rest of the mahogany off, which I left it on there so you could see my mistake. Who's the number now? If I'm doing this stuff, somebody else is bound to do this stuff too. So um, as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll have Laguna's number down there in the description so you can get a hold of those guys. They're real cool. If you're first time here, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, all that YouTube stuff. And we'll see you next time. Y'all be good. There's no way we could ever break or bruise it. A part of you is always there.